Hello everyone, welcome to this CUBE conversation with Mike Puya from Kaseya. He's the general manager of the security suite. So Mike, tell us about what you do. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I run our security suite, which means uh, I'm in charge of all of our different security products uh, that we provide to the MSP and SMB markets. Uh, so everything from endpoints to cloud to penetration testing, um, that falls under uh, under me and to decide where we're going uh, as an organization. So it is quite a big job because security uh, is definitely a hot topic, especially in the context of uh, ransomware and, and cyber attacks that, that uh, keep coming. Uh, let me ask you a quick question. So you have a number of products, uh, I could say a number of brands uh, and events, uh, Connect IT is a great event, uh, uh, Datto, Kaseya, how does it all fit? Sure, absolutely. Um, so Connect is, and I've got that up on my, my wall behind me, uh, being in front of our customers is really important, hearing what's happening in the real world. So we have large conferences around the world, one, two, three, four of them every year. We attract more than 10,000, probably 15,000 different companies come to it. And then we have smaller ones. We do road shows continuously. We're in two cities every single week of the year having smaller one-on-one -on -one discussions. Uh, how does everything fit together? Uh, we have a platform that we call IT Complete. Um, IT Complete is a descriptive. We try to have everything you would need to deliver services uh, in an IT environment. Uh, security is one part of it and it's things that are automated and integrated together. So if I pull something else off the shelf, some new threat is out there or new technology and I want to pull that off the shelf, it comes into the suite and you get a benefit that it's all integrated together. One plus one equals three, so to speak. Absolutely, and, and I know there's quite a bit going on in terms of new developments, making it easy to adopt uh, with uh, some initiatives. Uh, around Kaseya 365, et cetera. So lots of, of great capabilities. And of course, security is a hot topic. I know you guys spend a lot of time surveying your market and, and your partners. And I, I believe uh, in one of your recent surveys, uh, something like 40% or 41% of the respondents were actually reported that they were fished, they were uh, attacked with a phishing type of attack. And then 41 or 40%, again, same general number, had seen a ransomware or a virus attack. So uh, we know that there is pretty much a ransomware attack every hour, every day, maybe multiple times a day. So how does uh, that affect uh, the end users and more importantly, the service providers that leverage your platform and your tools? What, uh, what do you do to help them make this less of a problem? Yeah, and it's a, and it's a big problem. Um, and we've seen it escalate. You know, I've been in the industry, I don't want to say 30 plus years, but it seems like a bigger problem every single year. And it is not that we are less secure, um, but we end up facing newer threats. You know, it, cyber crime is just like physical crime. If it is relatively easy to conduct, and it's easy to be successful, uh, and there's a low probability of getting caught and facing consequences, uh, that, that equation means it will continue. And so what we try to do is help our partners and customers to make it more difficult uh, for someone to succeed in a cyber attack, make it less severe. You're starting to hear a lot of this uh, terminology of cyber resilience. Um, it kind of goes back to the days of, uh, you know, of a car, right? You, you, now you have seat belts, you have airbags, you have collision avoidance. So if you do have an accident, which may be unavoidable at some point in the life of your driving cars, that you'll have a fender bender and not a total loss of the vehicle. So we try to do something that makes it easy for our customers to provide cybersecurity defense and resilience because as anybody at an MSP or an IT knows, these are the things, you know, people say, oh, what will keep keeps you up at night? Not worrying about it, but usually it happens weekends, nights, holidays. And 
you know, it will disrupt the operations of a business and the people who live in that world, IT and MSPs, uh, it will a cyber attack, a successful compromise will take your team off of what they're normally doing for a long period of time. And I'm sure many of the viewers here have spent hours recovering from an attack. So we want to make that less severe, less frequent, um, as, as well as try to stop it before it happens. And, and, and we'll double click on this in a second because I think there's plenty that you bring to the table to, to really help with what has become a true business problem. This is not just an IT issue. It truly affects uh, uh, people's lives, uh, people's jobs, and more importantly, the ability for business to continue its operations. You know, uh, I know we're going to talk about early uh, detection and response EDR products. There are a couple of, uh, there's a bit of an acronym soup in cyber, right? But uh, EDR is certainly a, a well-known term. But it turns out that I think a lot of organizations in, in the mid-market, small organizations, may not uh, find that EDR is something that's easy for them to implement. They may not have the skill set. And they may also hear, well, you know, those EDR solutions, they're more for enterprises, and they tend to be noisy. They send you alerts all the time. So tell us more about how you're approaching this, because you're really trying to solve that issue. We are. It, it is a, you know, we... We, you'll hear in cybersecurity that you know SMBs face the same problems as Fortune 100 enterprises, and I would say that's absolutely true. They face the same risks. Uh, there isn't a lot of extra effort uh, required. Uh, you know, I can go out and and try to compromise as much as I want. Um, the downside is a lot of the tools that were built for the enterprise. Uh, really assume you have people who have a PhD in cybersecurity. They can look at every little bump in the road. And the reality is the cost and complexity and ability to support that is not something that is feasible for most MSPs or SMBs. You want to still have the same capabilities, but you need to look at what are the most important things in an attack chain that I can catch without having to have a, an extensive history in cybersecurity. And so we spend a large amount of our time working on correlation and making meaningful alarms and giving you the ability to have the system take action for you to kind of augment your team, as we're seeing a lot with AI and things like that, um, so that can prevent and lessen the impact of such attacks uh, at an SMB or MSP without having you know, all of the uh, uh, resources that a Fortune 100 company would have. Right, because uh, IT professionals, uh, and especially MSPs, who are the IT professionals for so many of their clients, need to be able to respond quickly uh, and detect attacks earlier as they happen. Uh, so they need the tooling, they need the dashboards, they need all of that uh, in place in order to do so. Can you? Uh, Talk to us about uh, your solution. Let's double click on the technology. Let's double click on the product. So let's say uh, for a second, I'm an MSP. Uh, I have a number of customers. Uh, let's say there are multiple you know, uh, verticals to make it even more interesting. What do you have for, for me that I can use to really be this uh, very effective professional that's going to be able to say, hang on, something's going on here. I'm detecting a problem or I've, I'm figuring out something is uh, behaving very abnormally. Uh, how do I use your solution? What can you offer feature-wise to help me do this? Sure, absolutely. We have uh, many different products in the space, but probably where most organizations start is protecting the endpoint because the, you know, the, uh, the, the pot of gold is, is, is the keys to the kingdom are can I get into the environment? Can I get to the domain controller? That lets me in and get, uh, you know, ultimately get to the data. And when we look at the endpoint, traditional solutions has been antivirus, anti-malware. As you said, it, you know, there's an, uh, an alphabet soup of acronyms, you know, AV, AM, EDR, MDR, XDR, ABC, you know, it goes on. But in the end, you really want to look at, have I the ability to protect those assets. And the protection side 
really is about stopping the attack. And that really is your traditional antivirus, anti-malware. So we have a product called Datto AV, one of our, one of our uh, companies and brands. And that's all about looking for bad processes, files, things like that, and blocking them. The reality that I think every, most, if not all, technology professionals have realized is that is no longer sufficient. We need to go further because it can't stop everything. Uh, otherwise, there'd be you know, one AV product and no breaches ever, and everybody would be happy. So we've really seen the rise of EDR, or standing for Endpoint Detection and Response. And the market has kind of blurred the lines between AV and EDR, but essentially EDR is sitting on top of the AV and it's looking at behavior of the computer, the user, the activities that are going on. And it is looking for the needle in the haystack. It is trying to find normal behavior that is being used in an abnormal way. Because a lot of attacks aren't don't necessarily start with a malicious file. Once someone gets a, a, a foothold, they may use, it's called living off the land, normal commands, you know, creating a new user, joining them, to, uh, making them an administrator. Those are all legitimate commands, but if someone's doing that at two in the morning under domain controller, somebody better set up an alert and go and check and make sure that that was the person. So EDR is kind of the detect and respond portion of it. And we have a product that we call Datto EDR. It's been around for uh, eight plus years. Uh, the technology came out of the Air Force in their cert. And the idea behind that and all EDR products, regardless of the marketing hype, is you want to catch a compromise early in the attack chain. It has already happened. And you want to make a small problem, you know, stop a small problem from becoming a big problem. And that's really what we're focused on. And I would say if you look at most attack chains, there isn't just boom. It is I first get access. I escalate privileges. I move laterally. And there are many. It's a chain. And one way to think about it, if you look at any sports team, let's, you know, or sport, um, soccer, football, or for my European friends, <laughs> football, football, I, the offense or the attacker has to make their way down the field through a series of plays. And every time there is a play, a pass, a kick, what have you, the defense has an opportunity to stop them. The defense only has to stop them once from getting all the way down. The attacker has to do all these plays before they get a goal. So the goal of EDR is to try to get all of those points, opportunities to detect that something is happening that is abnormal and then respond, be able to neutralize, contain, and isolate that machine or those machines from the organization so the attack can't spread. Essentially, the main goal is once something has gotten in, detect it quickly and have a fender bender and not a total loss of the car. Right, and in order to do so, right, if I'm a service provider, I'm going to want that early uh, threat detection capability. I'm going to want a dashboard. I'm going to want uh, access to some technologies like correlation engines. I think you guys have that. I want to be able to detect uh, uh, fileless attacks. Uh, there are so many dimensions to this. Uh, can you double click a little bit on maybe some experiences, what you've seen in the field, uh, how some of your uh, service providers have been able to uh, thwart these attacks or, or really come in and, and save the day? Yeah, I mean, one of the big things is we tend to always focus on the, you know, the technology. And one of our little, one of our great things is we detect fileless in-memory attacks. So people who are the more advanced stuff where they're just loading stuff into memory where the programs run. And so they're very hard to detect. But the reality is we sometimes get overwhelmed with the technology and the news on the latest threats and things like that. And it's really the blocking and tackling in basics being consistent 
is much more effective than being worried about you know some obscure type of attack. And so what we try to do is, um, for example, if I am at a Fortune 100 company with a thousand infosec people, if somebody moves their mouse too quickly, it may send a signal. I joke about that because I used to work at one. And there's a team to go investigate, but there's one in a billion chance that that was an issue. It a SMB or an MSP, there isn't a team that or that they could pay for to be able to get to that level to catch the one in the billion. But our correlation engine will look at, well, I'll give my example that I gave. And this is a real world example from, from an MSP. They saw a uh, new user created. They were joined to the domain group as an admin. They then ran a PowerShell script from the command line to download something from the internet. All three of those types of activities are a low, but the combination of those three things together, that's going to trigger somebody needs to go and verify that. And in this particular case, um, it was not, you know, the IT or the MSP. It was an attacker following, you know, some pretty common techniques of getting access and then downloading their toolkit, and they were stopped at that point before they were able to exfiltrate data and do things. So I would say the ability to correlate a lot of low activity that you don't have a you know, PhD in security to look at every pulse, correlate those, raise that to an alert. And then the second part is we allow and have a set of recommended automated responses. So that's the R in the uh, you know, EDR. And so when we have certain things that reach a threshold, we can lock the machine, lock the user, do something on that to basically, you know, isolate, contain, and neutralize. So the MSP has to be involved, or the IT has to be involved, but you can have it do a lot of the heavy lifting and triage for you and take the first action that you would do and then deal with the issue um, after it's been stopped. So if it happened to be not a false positive, you could release it, but it didn't wake you up in the middle of the night and make you get online in those 30 seconds, you missed everything. So it has the ability to automate those types of things, but built for a smaller organization that doesn't have somebody uh, that's an InfoSec expert to be able to you know, be up 24 seven to look at it. Absolutely. I mean, this is exactly what I think the design point has to be. And look, I mean, we've, we've covered a lot of ground, Mike, and I think what you've provided us with is really uh, not only a lot to think about, but more importantly, uh, a solution. Uh, so really, I would encourage everybody to uh, go take a look at, at the solution or solutions, because really it's not just one thing. It's going to be uh, multiple components. And, and you mentioned uh, team sport. Yeah, uh, cybersecurity and uh, certainly is a team sport too. So Mike, uh, with this, I'd like to thank you so much for joining us, and I'd like to thank everybody uh, for watching us today. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you everyone for watching this CUBE conversation, and uh, stay tuned. Until next time. <laughs>